Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 5th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storms and Us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a nice blog post by Avinash Yain, and he's talking sort of about a follow up of some discovery that he made a couple months ago about exposed Jira servers. Now, back a couple months ago, it was in particular about a NASA Jira server that he found, but he took that a little bit further and what he found was literally hundreds if not thousands of Jira servers, some of them belonging to Fortune 500 companies that are exposing user details. The problem here is that in Jira, when you're, when you're setting up a project, by default, the visibility is set to all users and everyone, which actually means, well, literally all users, not just users that are registered with the server. Instead, it exposes, for example, user names and email addresses, as well as their roles and Jira groups to anybody who comes across that Jira server. Jira is quickly becoming sort of uh, one of uh, those systems that you probably should not expose to the public internet at all. Now, this can be tricky uh, given some of the global nature of some development teams, but uh, maybe protect it behind a VPN or some other form of additional layer of authentication may be a better idea. Avinash was able to find some of these servers with simple Google queries because uh, after all, uh, Google knows everything. So uh, Google also indexed a lot of them and then makes them easily available. In the last couple of months, a number of stories broke about various companies behind popular voice assistants reviewing voice snippets that were recorded from users. All the big three were affected by this uh, Google Amazon as well as Apple and they now have all reacted to some of this these issues. First of all, Apple decided to stop the manual review altogether. With Amazon, you now have the ability to actually opt out of uh, this review. For Google, I haven't really seen anything specific from Google yet about totally disabling uh, this particular feature. However, uh, Google has uh, posted about how they're using the data and now the German Information Security Office has has asked Google to stop this practice, at least well, uh, for users in Europe, because this behavior is not compatible with GDPR. So the fundamental problem here is that in order to improve the quality of uh, these voice assistants, uh, these companies have humans actually review voice recordings, then compare them to the automatic transcription. Now, in some cases, you may have seen similar features in software that usually require that you opt in. In this case, all three enabled this option without specifically asking for permission. I collected a couple of links to related stories about how to disable some of this and we'll add them to the show notes. And if you are using an NVIDIA video card in your Windows system, you may have noticed an update for the display driver. If not, then double check your automatic update process. In general, the Vulnerabilities being addressed here aren't what I would consider sort of super critical must patch now, but there is one with a CVSS score of 8.8 .8, and that's essentially an escalation of privileges vulnerability. So an attacker could run code on the system and then use the driver to get admin access. And when I talked about uh, Google Chrome 76 uh, last week, uh, one of uh, the fixes that I mentioned was that in Chrome 76, the file system API is available in incognito mode. The purpose of this was uh, to make it more difficult to detect if a user has incognito mode enabled. Well, uh, there is now a trick to actually figure out even in Google Chrome 76, 
if a user has incognito mode enabled and well it comes back down to a good old timing attack in google chrome 76 uh, files are stored in ram in order to be not persistent in the non-incognito mode of google chrome the files are saved on the regular disk file system which of course tends to be slightly slower and the result is that the attacker can use these timing differences in order to figure out if you have incognito mode enabled this is sometimes used by websites to essentially detect if they can track you and then sort of treat it as an ad blocker where they will not serve your content if you have incognito mode enabled. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.